Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off with a very interesting update concerning Zen 4. Specifically, a major change to the processor's architecture has been confirmed. As we know, Ryzen 7000, along with other Zen 4 processors, will launch later this year. And I have to say that I'm really excited to see what AMD have managed to wrangle out of this new architecture. Honestly, it is shaping up to be an absolutely a massive leap over Zen 3. And one of the things that I've mentioned a couple of times in videos is that my sources have told me that L2 cache of Zen 4 has basically doubled per core. So if you're unfamiliar, Zen 3 had 512 kilobytes of cache, I was about to say megabytes there, but now it's been increased to one megabyte. And there's actually a Geekbench result that has emerged, and we actually know that this is a Zen 4 based CPU because it's actually got the um, model number of a Epic CPU, which has already been attributed to Genoa, which, yeah, is Zen 4, of course, and this is courtesy of Executable Fix. This was earlier this year. Just to make things nice and simple here, we can see that it is a 32-core, 64-thread processor. Base frequency and so on are not that interesting at the moment. After all, these are not, you know, mass-produced samples. But what is interesting is that we can see the L2 cache is indeed confirmed to be one megabyte and obviously there's 32 cores so one megabyte times 32. The L3 cache though will remain at 32 megabytes per CCX. So basically the L3 cache is essentially identical at least in terms of quantity but what we have of course is L2 which is going to see a massive increase and honestly Zen 4 and Zen 5 are both absolutely going to be a monstrous processors. Um, I'm hearing, just to reiterate, that we're looking around a 25% increase in IPC from Zen 3 to Zen 4. In fact, Grayman has mentioned the same thing, and this is on top of my videos from a couple of uh, days ago as well, and I think I released one like a month ago that said much the same thing. But Zen 5, I'm even hearing, is even greater. Uh, I've had one source that's telling me it's around 30% IPC, and someone's told me it's around 25 to 30%. Of course, the thing about IPC, as always is it's really dependent upon the task that you're running and all of that and Zen 5 is nowhere near released yet so obviously it's still pretty early so we'll have to wait and see how all of this shapes up. Quite honestly I think that you know the next couple of processes from Intel as well as AMD are just going to be absolutely stellar. I am really excited because you know for so long we were on like four cores, eight threads as everyone knows like the the 2600k the 3770 you know 6700 and so on and so on and while skylake was pretty damn good for the time i think it's fair to say that processes have come a long way recently so it's absolutely awesome and there is also another thing i absolutely really need to discuss with you guys because quite frankly it is amazingly cool uh, I actually want to give credit to a bunch of people. There's actually so many of you that sent me this. I can't actually attribute it to everyone because like five or six people messaged me about this. Um, and I'm going to be using the Android Central article. So again, I will link it in the video description. Now, as just about everyone knows, Sony have been... Let's say KG about the PlayStation 5. I'm honestly surprised at this point that they that they even confirmed that the console required power. I'm surprised that if someone, you know, asked whether it plugs into the wall or not, they just said, nope, it's powered by Pixie Dust. Um, so yeah, a lot of the PlayStation 5's features were really kind of shrouded in mystery. There have been some things, of course, that the company have confirmed. They've confirmed that it's got a Zen 2 based uh, CPU, they've confirmed it's got eight cores, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of the actual abilities of the GPU and a lot of the actual functionality have, quite frankly, not been confirmed. But there is a really interesting thing which has happened, and that is GDC 2022. Now, unfortunately, what I really have hoped to happen is for, you know, a developer to, or someone to accidentally, wink, wink, 
kind of release some information on like you know back end of the development of a game and then we get a really good insight into it but that's not happened so you know we don't have like a razor which is one of the performance tools that sony uses we don't have any of those readouts or anything like that but they have um someone has done a naughty and basically um we have now some images for playstation vr 2 now i'll get to them in just a second but yeah i know playstation vr is not necessarily as exciting perhaps to some people as the console itself but i am hearing that it is really damn cool and apparently developers have stated that the machine is really impressive and one of the things that we've actually learned from this event from an actual image you can see that it's a unity panel slide and again i want to give credit to android central here we have vr alchemy lab now this is a demanding game basically you've got dynamic lights shadows and all of that stuff Interestingly enough, we can see an absolutely massive speed up here. So frame time, so for those who don't know, frame time is basically the amount of time it takes for one frame to be rendered because obviously when you're talking about frame rate in a game you're essentially referring to the number of still images basically that the gpu is generating in a second so for example 60 fps 60 fps sorry 60 images have been generated very simple stuff i'm sure most of you know that anyway so this is dropped from 33.2 milliseconds which is around an average of about 30 fps and you can calculate that by just basically taking 1,000, which is the number of milliseconds in a second, and then you divide it by whatever the time it takes in terms of milliseconds to generate a frame. So 33.2 is around 30 FPS, give or take, and it drops down to 14.3. So that's a 2.3 times improvement, which is running at 4K, which is really impressive. Furthermore, we're looking at CPU thread as well as GPU performance also going up significantly. And in other benchmarks, a Apparently, we're looking at 2.5 times faster and 3.6 times faster. But what is this? I still haven't mentioned how these improvements are happening. Well, it all comes down to foveated rendering as well as eye tracking. So foveated rendering is something that I mentioned was part of the PlayStation 5 like ages ago before the console actually released and eye tracking as well. Basically, what happens here is that the shading rate of a scene differs pretty much based upon what is going on in your vision so what and i'm vastly simplifying here but what essentially happens is that the playstation vr 2's headset is basically tracking what your vision is doing what your eye is looking at and then will shade things that are in your peripheral vision with lower detail and this obviously is a huge win because just for sake of argument uh, like let's just say you go outside i know it's scary out there but just imagine you did for a second and uh, you know you're looking down the street and you know let's say your eye is focused on a car but you let's say while your eye is focused on that car you're trying to perceive detail that's on a building that's say to your far right in other words in your peripheral vision it's quite hard to make out fine details uh for example you know on a sign or something like that and that obviously is kind of what foveated rendering is so it's pretty much maximizing the amount of performance that you can get out of the GPU by just essentially smartly rendering it. And it's not the same technology. I really want to stress that, but it's kind of like in a similar vein to like up sampling. The technology is not the same, but what I'm trying to say is that with up sampling, reconstructing an image from a lower resolution one to a higher resolution, what you're basically doing is smartly utilizing system resources. And I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this plays out. Um, I think the PSVR 2 is seemingly a really cool device. To my understanding, the PlayStation 5 Pro really, you know, just doubles down on this, assuming the console ever gets released. Like, you know, I put out my video, but at the end of the day, until I see a product, until the product is actually something that is on store shelves or officially announced by Sony, and even then it can be, let's face it, cancelled, um, you know, I'll have some level of skepticism, but I am really looking forward to seeing what Sony can do here. Um, 
I'm not a massive proponent of VR by any stretch of the imagination, but still, I am quite excited to see what this can do. I think it should be pretty cool. And honestly, VR, I think, has a lot of immersive abilities, obviously. I don't think that VR works well for every game, um, but I think for those it does work on, it, it does so really well. So, you know, we'll see. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Apologies for it, A, being a little shorter than normal, and B, me not being on camera, but uh, I'm working on a couple of projects at the moment, and to be honest with you guys, time just kind of got away with uh, from me, excuse me, and uh, I'm also working still on a few other bits, so yeah. Uh, hopefully I will return to normal tomorrow. Well, you know, normal and me have a... Uh, a kind of distant relationship. With that said, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.